This is a Fox News alert. NBC News is officially reporting that Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has passed away. Now, we've heard reports for the last couple of weeks that his health has been deteriorating and at a very rapid pace. But today, it has been confirmed that the president has, in fact, died. So, Eric, we go to you first on this one. Big news and big news for the future of Venezuela and arguably, I mean, the world. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, implications here. First of all, on foreign policy, he's never been a friend to America. He has done things that made us uh, upset. He called George Bush uh, the devil, El Diablo, once from the mm -hmm. UN platform. He's also done things like said he, he will ship oil, his oil. We need his get refined products, gasoline and heating oil. He was going to ship that to China, even though it cost him a lot more to do it, just to keep it out of the hands of the Americans. So um, if the reports are true, I guess they are true, I would say that there's no love lost between the, the United States and Venezuela, and hopefully the next regime that comes through won't be a regime. It'll be more friendly, um, more peaceful regime, more, uh, more let's call it market-oriented regime. Mm -hmm. Dana, this could be a huge opportunity for the United States. I think the people of Venezuela could see it that way. Do you think there is opportunity in that country? I think, I think the opportunity exists for the people of Venezuela who um, have been longing for freedom. They've been living under this horrible dictator. I don't think he will be missed by anybody. Um, I remember when they did the... Um, a million Facebook march or something like that. There was a, there was a young man who's now um, a fellow at the Bush Institute in Dallas, and he put forward this uh, freedom initiative and a democracy push, and basically was targeted and thrown out of the country. He had, to, he had to leave. But what he did was peel back the false layer that Hugo Chavez had put put over the country that said that everybody was happy with the way he was running things. They're not happy, and this could be the opportunity to. Uh, change course. And Venezuela. not just Venezuela, not just the United States, but also, Greg, I would argue Latin America. Now, his health has been deteriorating for a very long time. We hadn't seen him in a while, and just a couple weeks ago, we saw a picture of him emerge. It was almost like they were trying to say, wait, no, he's still alive. No, he's yeah. still alive. But he was very, very sick. It's amazing. Even Fidel Castro outlived him. How is that possible? <laughs> and I just, been, I just figured out that his name is Hugo and not Hugo, and then he dies. My condolences to Sean Penn. Uh, he must be grieving. The actor's very upset. They were buddies, yeah. pals, in fact. Yeah. He actually, I believe, went to Venezuela mm -hmm. to meet with him. Sort of like the Dennis Rodman diplomacy, exactly. where you shook your head and said, why are you meeting he with the He was the dictator? first. He was the first to do that. Actually, no, he wasn't the first. But he was the first, you know, modern celebrity to uh, cozy up to jerks. Instead of washed up celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. were there were a few countries in, South, in Central and South America that had options to go different ways. They could have come more into the mainstream. They could have embraced capitalism, marketism. Colombia did that. Yep. Venezuela didn't do that. Bolivia, which was on the fence, had tried to do it, and then kind of the Bolivian um, uh, president hooked up with Chavez, and he kind of went left with Chavez. Maybe now, maybe the Central and Southern South America will bring themselves back into a more free trade group and more fr uh, U.S. friendly group, which would be a, a very boon for the American people to, because we can trade with them. We can buy their oil, we can buy their natural gas, we can make, and by the way, a lot of other minerals as well, not just oil and gas. Mm -hmm. They are a very uh, rich country in fuel. Bob, do you think this is an opportunity for the country? I know you've, you've worked at the State Department, you've worked at administrations before. If you're the Obama White House right now, what are you, what are you thinking? You're thinking, first of all, it's the longest death in the history of uh, <laughs> Western civilization. It's been going on now for two years. But I think, look, this is a country that is ch chock full of natural resources, which we need. Venezuela has been an ally of ours until Chavez took over. And I think that there is a yearning there, and there's a very strong opposition group who will move in and probably may have success at the polling place. Here's the other thing about Chavez. He's one of the few guys who's a dictator who did not leave an heir apparent. And so that's going to be a problem for his people. Dana, mm -hmm. let's pretend you're back in the White House. Mm -hmm. How would how would how do you think the White House is reacting right now? How do you think they're going to handle? This? I think it'll be measured, and they'll show support for the Venezuelan people and encourage them to uh, seek their dreams, which is uh, a more free society. One of the things that Hugo Chavez did was uh, prevent them from having any access to free media, um, cutting off uh, the internet uh, and only showing state-sponsored television. To, and this is what dictators do. It's not unusual in a dictatorship, um, but uh, Latin America is just rich, not just with natural resources, but with a huge amount of talent, um, from sports to uh, movies uh, and also in business. Mm -hmm. So they, I think this is a great opportunity and that if I were uh, at the State Department now, I would figure it out a way, if it's possible, to get some of our people uh, in there working with a transition government, if it's possible, to be able to do that. They had an election not too long ago 
election. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some people, at least, that, that were brave enough uh, under uh, Hugo Chavez regime to come forward. So maybe there's somebody in that group that could be pulled up and helped to, to make the country better. Do they send, do, would the, do you, does America send somebody to the funeral? To the funeral? Oh, not this one, I don't think. Yeah. I, I doubt Somebody it. Although that. John Kerry, Eric, this could be the first big task uh, of his tenure as the incoming Secretary of State. Well, I guess it remains to be seen who's going to take over in Venezuela. There was an election recently. There was also an election a few years back where it was uh, it widely thought that, that Chavez actually lost, but then yep. a couple of days later it turns out Chavez technically won or somehow he, he made sure that happened. Whoever takes over. Kind of interesting now, though. There's an opportunity. I know President Obama has wanted to open up Cuba. He's really wanted to get Cuba uh, away from a dictatorship and more into a more democracy. Maybe this time, maybe this death by Chavez and, and when uh, Castro passes away, when Fidel Castro, Raul Castro is a little bit more of a free marketeer as well, maybe that's an opportunity to bring more of these Latin American let's, countries. Let's keep in mind, there's also there's, there's Argentina, there's Colombia, there's Brazil, uh, there's Chile. There's a lot of very big countries down there that we used to do a, a lot of trading with, and I think this may open up the floodgates for us. And it is a big opportunity, especially for the White House to come out and support if there are pockets of people who want yeah, this democracy. Definitely. Now is the time.